we're talking about sexual exploitation of children, I think the key thing to remember is that there's an element of exchange involved. So the exchange could be money, but it might be other things like a roof over their head or security in dangerous situations like living on the street. The important thing to remember is that the sexual exploitation of children happens all over the world and we know it affects different age categories, different genders and children from different ethnic groups and social statuses. For a long time when we've thought about sexual exploitation of children we've concentrated our attention on girls because we know that girls tend to be highly affected by this problem. But we also know that boys are affected. The thing is though, research and programming has tended to focus on girls. And that means that we don't have a lot of information about boys. What ECPAT wants to do is gather all of the information that's available, both the research and the policy and other recommendations, and we want to add to that. So we want to learn new things and make really clear recommendations for the future so that we can ensure boys are getting the support they need and that services are available and open for them. We also want to be able to do the very best we can to prevent the problem in the first place. So one of the key risks to boys is the idea of gender norms. So what that is, is that we have a set of expectations for how we want boys to behave or how we want girls to behave. And we need to change that a little bit because what it tends to do is block boys from even being able to seek help and might even frame how we provide support to them. For example, if a boy comes to us and tells us they have a problem, we might say, toughen up or you can deal with that yourself, rather than giving them the space to talk about it, sharing the fact that sometimes we have problems we talk about as well, and encouraging you know, proper support and, and care. Homophobia is one of the ways that gender, gender norms impacts boys seeking help and getting services. There's a myth out there that sexual abuse of boys might turn them gay, and of course we know that's not true. But we do see circumstances where families, the community, or even those staff providing support to boys might encourage them to keep the secret. In fact, in 73 countries around the world, it's illegal to have gay sex anyway. So in those circumstances, boys may really fear um, raising their alarm bells about what's happened to them. And in fact, if they go to law enforcement, in some cases, they even find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Rather than being treated as victims, they're punished. Another way that gender norms might influence the way boys experience sexual exploitation is when female perpetrators are involved. Boys themselves might even be blamed for encouraging the exploitation, and even if people do report it, they get told, well, it's a cool thing for boys to have sex at your age. It's important for us to point out that with the Boys Initiative, we're not suggesting that money be taken away from the services and research that's used for girls, but we want to be able to add to that. For a long time, we've concentrated attention on how sexual exploitation affects girls. We need to also add information about how sexual exploitation affects boys what things are similar, what things are different, and then how do we provide the services and encourage boys to seek help if they have been affected. So it's important for us to change the way that we talk to boys. We need to stop saying things like, boys don't cry or toughen up, because what that does is it discourages boys from seeking help when something's gone wrong. It's more helpful for us to say things like, yeah, sometimes I feel like crying too, or demonstrate to kids that when you do have issues, what you'll do is you'll talk to your partner, you'll talk to your friends to get help. We need to be able to talk to children in age-appropriate ways and encourage them to share their feelings and to know about the things that shouldn't be happening to them. We know that those small daily comments can make the difference between a child suffering in silence or coming to an adult for help. We need to make sure that children grow up understanding that sexual exploitation is never their fault. It's always the responsibility of an adult perpetrator and children should always feel comfortable coming to us for help.